Hi there, it's Rob again. Welcome to the second part of our QLab Basics uh, tutorial on the use of video and image uh, media files. In the first tutorial we looked at the video queue and also how to set up a, a multiple screen system using a thing like the uh, Matrox triple head. In this tutorial we're going to take our basic video queue and we're going to add some uh, animation to it in the form of a fade, uh, video fade and also look at the basics of fading audio for video as well. So let's get straight back to the tutorial. When it comes to using images with audio, um, the, thing, the two things you'll often want to do where, when manipulating images in a show is you'll want to fade them in. And so what I'll do is I'll just show you how to do that. Now the key thing here is to use the animation cue, which is basically a fade cue for video. I've, I've dragged the animation cue in. I'm going to call it something like fade trailer. See, we can use all exactly the same tools as you do when you're using audio cues in QLab. You can uh, give it a name and stuff. And we're just going to make sure that it fades this particular cue. So that's fading this chain letter cue. Now, red cross again. And then what it says on this time with the, with the animation cue is it says at least one property must be am animated. Now, that basically means that in the settings tab of this animation cue, nothing is being affected. Nothing's being adjusted, nothing's changing, nothing's anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you look at this queue, it fills the screen here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity of this queue and I'm going to, if going, I'm going to set it to full. So the opacity is like the brightness of the queue, so a brightness of the, of the video. And I'm going to go back to this queue and I'm going to set the opacity here to zero. So when the queue starts, uh, it starts with zero opacity, which is black basically, and then the next cue is that it goes on to fade up, so the opacity is at full. Again, you can use these cues, uh, use this content in layers. If you want to fade things to 50% opacity, you can build up cues, uh, visual cues, using a number of bits of content, fading them in stuff. But basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to basically fade up the content when we have the go. So the thing we're changing here is opacity. So let's just cue up this. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit go and then that's going to start the black screen, but it's not going to fade up the trailer. So until I hit the second go. Okay, so I haven't hit the second go yet. Next go. Okay, so what happened there was I hit the first go and it set the, the, the trailer running at zero opacity. Uh, and then I hit the next go and it faded it up to 100% over five seconds, a bit like an audio fade cue. Um, you don't need to worry about this, uh, the fact that this is on a different screen because actually we haven't set the, uh, we haven't set the uh, anything else, any of the other parameters to change. So what we could have done though, is we could set the scale as well. So it's gonna, fa it's gonna scale down and it's gonna fade up. So let's see what happens there. Okay, so the queue's going, but I haven't hit the second queue, so you can't see anything. Hit go. Okay, so the queue faded up over five seconds from black, and it also uh, and it also uh, sc uh, scaled down, so it got smaller and smaller in the image. Now, if you were going to do a lot of complex animation of, of things, you wouldn't necessarily want to use QLab to do that. But if you needed to just move a few things around or to have a particular effect at one point, you could do some of those things using the scale and using the opacity. Now the thing you'll notice when I hit that cue was that the, only th the, the, the actual trailer itself, the audio, started straight away. Now it's very good that uh, QLab separates the audio and the video because it means that you can set fade cues, a normal audio fade cue, to, uh, separately to um to how to, to the the um, actual images. So if I put a fade cue in here, and drag my uh, drag my uh, drag my uh, file over there, you also are going to say usual thing with a fade cue. No fade levels have been activated. If you've used QLab a bit, you'll find it says that. Now if I just set this to zero. I'm not going to hit stop target when done because that's not going to help me. I don't want to stop it once I'm in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my chain letter trailer with audio levels at zero, at, 
at minus infinity and then I'm going to fade them up to zero. So it's going to be totally silent to start with and then fade up when I tell it to. So the first thing that's going to happen is that the cue is going to go but that will be nothing because there'll be no uh, audio, just a black screen. I'll fade up the audio and then I'll fade up the trailer. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so nothing's happening, no audio, but it's playing in the background. First cue. Fade up of the audio. Next cue. Fade up of the video and scaling of the video to be small on the screen. Okay, so I'm not sure that was the best show that I've ever created in the world, but it gives you an idea of how you can use um, the, the video cue and the animation cue to do similar things that you do in QLab with the audio cue and the fade cue. And it also, just to be clear, the, uh, if you want to fade um, audio on your video file, you also need to put an additional fade cue in. Now, if you wanted all those to happen together, you could obviously put an auto uh, continue or an auto follow on of some kind um, there. So there's the key things really. When you're, in, when you're using uh, image files, still image files, it's worth remembering that unless you set a fade cue or a stop cue or something to actually affect the, the image video file, the image carries on uh, firing um, even underneath, uh, uh, underneath any other cue that you fire over the top. So say this first file uh, was fired and, the, and then the next set of cues went. If the final cue was to fade out this, uh, fade out the uh, trailer, so let's make that happen. Let's just go to the fade out trailer. Um, let's call it video away. And I'm just going to set the opacity back to zero again. So that's the next cue. Let's take that off. And the final cue will basically take off the video that's on top. But first I'm going to play back the whole set of files together. So the first cue is going to be my still image file going. There we are, it's slightly skewed and a little bit small. So the next cue is the start of, of the next piece. So that's my cue playing, but you can't see it or hear it because I haven't hit the next cue. You can hear the fade up of the music. Final cue is going to be the fade in the second set of video. And I'm going to fade the video out. So what you could see there, if you remember when you saw that, is that the, the image file continued to play underneath the, the file that I put over the top, which was the trailer. Now, with the image files, it's very important to understand that if, if they continue to go, it's quite handy because you can use that functional to actually fade between things and back again. So you can leave an image file running, fade something over the top of it, and then fade that thing back again and the image file will continue to be there. So you don't have to keep cross-fading between two things, you can just leave an image there and then fade up and down. What it does mean is that if you use very uh, highly complex stacks of videos in your cue list, unless you specifically stop a still image from playing in QLab, it will keep going. And so if you had a lot of images in your show, you could get to a situation where you kept firing images which came on top of each other and stacked up and stacked up. And by the end of the show, your uh, RAM was r completely chock full of images that were all playing at once when they didn't necessarily need to be because it's not like a PowerPoint show where uh, you, you know, you'll play a slide and then you'll play another slide and the, and the previous slide will be knocked off by the first one. Um, that basically they can continue to go in the background until you tell them to stop. Now you can do them and stop them in a number of ways. You could set a, a an animation cue which would stop target when done. So you could do the same thing as you do with an audio cue. Or you could hit uh, you could insert an actual stop cue itself or a pause cue or anything basically that would stop the uh, uh, unload the image from the RAM. So if you use a stop cue it would uh, unload the image from the RAM. So that's it really. A couple of things there, the video cue and the animation cue, essentially the same in QLab as the audio and the fade cue, only for visual content. And just to remember, uh, you also have to uh, use a fade cue when fading your audio so that you could fade it along with the video. Thanks very much for listening. See you again soon.